Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Hello friends and welcome to Fairfield Today. Paul Jasson with you. Thank you for joining us in this uh, holiday Christmas season. We're glad you're here. Uh, we're of course telecasting downtown from the lobby of Fairfield Federal where we look out today and it's a little overcast, a little cloudy as we do the taping today, but uh, that's okay. It's, it's this time of year. It's this time of season. We're very excited to be in the, the holiday season and, and, and on that note, there are this time of year just countless events going on, uh, craft shows and uh, plays and concerts. I mean, every weekend has at least two or three scheduled on a Saturday or a Sunday, and we'll, we'll cover a lot of them for you. And we'll begin today's show with one of those events and, and really a pretty neat event coming up December 4th. It's the uh, Lancaster Fairfield County Youth Choir, uh, and we'll talk about that with uh, the gentleman that really handles that for them, he's a kind of a, wears a lot of hats for the Cor Lancaster Corral and for uh, the youth choir, and that's uh, Ivan Smith. Ivan is the liaison, I guess we would call you, between the Lancaster Corral oh. and the youth choir. That's, that's Cause accurate. Because you, you were that's on the accurate, board yes. of, the, uh, of the Lancaster Corral, but then you were also there kind of many years ago now when this youth choir started going. You've always been an advocate for the youth choir. Absolutely. Yeah. And when uh, Kathy Brown, the founder, yeah. uh, realized... That's been 20 plus years yeah, ago? Yeah, that's about right. 20, 22, thereabouts. Okay. She realized that she had to resign for personal reasons mm -hmm. and she called me up and, and said, uh, would Lancaster Corral be interested in in being the administrator. Well, at that home. point, it was separate. Yeah, okay. she she started it. Yeah, just in on 1992. Her own. Yeah, and uh, she she was the only person involved uh, for that until I said to the board, "Hey, uh, this is you got to do this," yeah. and they readily agreed. I'd like to take credit for that, <laughs> but. Uh, there was nothing to it. There was yeah. no sale involved. I just well, said, "Board, you got to do this," and they said, "Okay." Uh, that was just a natural yeah, addition exactly. to the crowd, natural extension for the corral, bringing young people along in the world of music. It just, it just kind of fit their bidding. It did, and and several young people have gone on from the Lancaster Fairfield Youth Choir to become members of Lancaster Corral. Nice. One of whom is the 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 leader of, of LFYC. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, so we're talking about Kylie Og. Kylie Og. She is she is now the director. She's in her is this her second year. Se that's correct. Second season as the uh, director of the youth choir, and uh, I've been to uh, I've been to one of the concerts. I, they probably had a couple, but I've been to one, and uh, she just does a bang up job. She does. And uh, one of the good things that happens to me, I have occasion to go to the uh, some of the rehearsals, mm -hmm. and and sometimes Kylie will sing at the rehearsal because she's demonstrating something how she how the kids need to do it, and that's worth the price of <laughs> going. I bet to the those rehearsal. kids are mesmerized when they hear her. Yeah, because yeah. she has an amazing amazing she, voice. She's an amazing singer, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So so the. The, the uh, youth choirs having their concert coming up on December fourth. It's at First Presbyterian Church at right. seven p.m. Seven p.m. Yep, and that's December fourth. Yep. Um, Christmas concert, Christmas, obviously, Christmas with concert. with this time of the year. And uh, I guess uh, from what we were talking before, uh, the number in the youth choir has grown to around twenty. Yeah, uh, when, when we finished the last season. There were 12 singers. And that was the first season with Kylie. That was the first season with Kylie. And we really needed more, and we, we always want more. Yeah. Uh, but we started this season with 20, so we mm. jumped. She jumped it from 12 to 20. It's by audition. Yeah. Uh, and uh, kids generally know whether they have a shot at passing the audition or sure, not. Sure, sure. Occasionally. And this is That's boys and good. girls. Boys and girls, treble singers, sopranos and altos. Ages? Ages fourth grade and up. Okay. 
what happens is <laughs> the boys can't stay there till grade 12 because their voices change and some of the girls will go on to something else but many of them stay right through grade 12 because they get hooked yeah and it works out really well because you've got a young fourth grader that's first year she can be placed next to a senior who's obviously more mature and better versed at, at how to sing well. So these kids, they're, they're all those ages right now. 20 kids, you've got them every age. We've got them fourth grade through. Yeah, through yeah. and that's school. all, as, as the name indicates, Lancaster and Fairfield County. Yep, yeah. yep. She's, she goes out and recruits these young people. Oh yeah, yeah she recruits them and, and they audition. She has auditions in the, in the fall. And uh, and uh, those that pass audition, which, as I said, it, it's it's not a cakewalk, but they know coming in that they have an no. interest in it, and yeah. so most of them most of them are are, are accepted and uh, they're in. Now I know sometimes. Now it doesn't sound like it's this year since December fourth is is their is their choir. Some sometimes the youth choir has sung with the Lancaster Chorale in their Christmas concert. Yes, that and you're right, Paul. That's not happening this year, and it ha doesn't happen every year. No, it doesn't happen every year. But it is one of the real benefits that kids get from participating in the Lancaster Fairfield Youth Choir. Uh, they get to sing alongside the awesome professional singers of Lancaster Chorale, and as I mentioned, some of them go on to become singers sure. in Lancaster Chorale, sure. including our director, Mrs. Og. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, you talked about sometimes it's a, it's a good thing for a younger person in the youth choir to be with an older person in the youth choir. Sure. Well, how neat would it be to just be around people who make a living doing this, in many cases with the Lancaster Chorale, like Kylie, they, they make a living at singing. And here are young people that can look up to them, and, and, and I'm sure they are role models to a lot of these kids, or they would become. Maybe I could do that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I could do that. I'd like to do that. I think I'd like to do that. Yeah. And I've interviewed a lot of people that are, that are not involved with Lancaster Corral anymore. They don't even live in Lancaster, but they were, they were singers in the Lancaster Fairfield oh, yeah. Youth Choir. And one way or another, they earn their living through vocal music. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a pretty neat group to watch them, and in many cases you get to see the parents and the grandparents get to attend a concert to see their young people, their, their, their child, their grandchild singing this, and it's, that's a pretty awesome thing. You see a lot of cameras out there, you see a lot of videos oh, yeah. going on. This, oh, yeah. this is, in some cases, the, the first time they've ever had this attention paid to music. That's right, that's yeah. right. And, uh, uh, we have usually always have a little reception afterwards yeah. for uh, beverages and cookies and how and how many concerts are in a season? Are there two or three? Three. There's one three. more after this. Yes. In this season. Yes. Okay. And, and, and there could be there could be an extra gig that comes along because somebody says oh, I'd like to have them. Mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. we already know the music because of the first two concerts and we can get ready for that. Kids get paid the same. <laughs> yeah, they <get> zero. <laughs> <laughs> They're not in it for the money. And and, and I, I think we want to we'll mention again about Kylie Ogg. She's only been on the staff here of uh, the youth choir for a couple of years. years. But uh, she seems to be almost a perfect fit for this organization. She really is. Uh, I can just watch, it, tell by watching it at the, con at the rehearsals. The kids love her and she loves the kids. Yeah. It's made. And, it, and, be. and being a teacher, which is her vocation, uh, it's just kind of a natural, they understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. Sometimes she has to be a little stern, but not very often. Well, she, she has that capability. Yeah, she does. I mean, she's married to Nathan. She, <laughs> she knows how to be stern. And I think maybe she has to do it from time to time in school, too. <laughs> possibly. And I don't possibly know. at home. You know, knows? I've talked this before with... Uh, other people like Clarence McCoy who directs a church choir and has another group the Lancaster Community Chorus and with other people at, at the uh, the men's course and other people you know this is a good time for somebody even as young as is beginning with our youth choir here that uh, there are really opportunities in Lancaster and Fairfield County 
certainly to sing going through school. Everybody can sing going up in grade school, junior high, high school. Everybody has that possibility. But there was a time when there wasn't much beyond that until the Lancaster Corral came around. But, you know, that's a pretty select group right there. It but is. now there are choruses, there <laughs> are barbershop quartets for women, yes. there are uh, men's choruses. Uh, there, there's just a lot of opportunities as these young people, they, if, even if they don't leave Lancaster and Fairfield County, they could continue to sing. Absolutely. And I think, I think we have more vocal music opportunities in Lancaster oh. than in most other cities yeah. the size of Lancaster. Yeah. Absolutely. A lot of, lot of opportunities here for men and women. Absolutely. Boys and girls, and to, not only out here at OUL, there, there's, there's things to do out there, musicals that uh, Victor Jones puts on out there. There's the opportunity if you go to school here, but if you go away, you come home on a break, maybe there's an opportunity to sing then, too. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of opportunities. And, and again, it's, it's, it's a group, and, uh, you know, they can use the money to buy music, to, do, to pay for uh, the expenses that come up. You know, it's not a, it's not a, a, a completely free gig. No, it's not a free gig, and the tuition, right now the tuition is, is $125 per season for, for a singer. Per singer. And, and you look around, and you look in Columbus, and our tuition is very reasonable. Oh. Uh, and uh, you look at some of the copies of music. I was holding a copy of a song that they were singing the other night, and, and the score cost $2.20. Uh, when I was a boy soprano, those scores cost six cents and nine cents a piece. <laughs> Where well, your voice has changed, dollars. and so have the prices. <laughs> They've both gone up. So it's the Lancaster. No, mine's <laughs> gone down. <laughs> it's the Lancaster Fairfield Youth Choir. Yeah. Ivan Smith has been with us. He's again the liaison with the Lancaster Corral. We were sort of the sort of the uh, mentor mentoree situation with the Lancaster. Uh, Fairfield County Youth Choir. So it's called it, the administrative home. Administrative mm -hmm. home, and that's right. So uh, good backing going on there with the corral and then to the youth choir. So again, congratulations on uh, what we think will be a, another great season in the Christmas concert. We think it'll be great fun. Thank Hope you. you have great attendance. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, and we'll be back in just a moment. You walked down the aisle and promised happily ever after. Sometimes happily ever after means ending a relationship. We know the conversations are not easy. Deciding what's best for you, your children, and your next steps takes work and communication. At Dagger Law, we know there are no monsters in a divorce, only people trying to find their way. Local, trusted, experienced. Dagger Law. I want a doctor who listens to me. From primary care to specialty medicine, we put your needs first by treating you like a person, not a number. Our primary care team will help you identify your healthcare needs and set goals for success, regardless of where you are in your wellness journey. We care for patients of all ages, with offices that are close to you. Whatever you're searching for, you can find it at Fairfield Medical Center. Greetings from Fairfield DD. We are excited to share the joys of the fall season with you. As we move into cooler weather, we hope to see you at Football Friday Nights and the County Fair. As you enjoy the season of changing colors, we also want to remind you of the change we hope to see. We pursue a vibrant community where everyone leads a fulfilling life and everyone makes meaningful contributions. Don't forget to stop by our social purpose enterprise, Art and Clay on Main and Square 7 Coffee House, to paint a new piece for your table this season or enjoy a handcrafted fall beverage. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Welcome back to Fairfield Today, Paul Jasson with you, or a more festive Paul Jasson as we are well into the uh, Christmas season right now. And probably uh, for those that have watched this show over the years, this is uh, the one time that I really get into costume for a show, and it is for the wonderful 
candlelight tour that occurs here in Lancaster coming up here on December 10th. December 10th, coming up in a couple of weeks right here. Uh, the candlelight tour, one of the really nice events to happen around uh, so many great events at this holiday and festive season. And, and I've got the two people here that really know what's going on with the candlelight tour. I've got Lynn Patchen and co-chairman Carl Speckman. Yes. Very good. Very good. Uh, first time we've had an assistant elf with you oh, to yes, help with this. Yes. Very exciting. Very handsome young man. Well, uh, it's here again. Fresh blood. Uh, how did it happen over the years now with everything that's gone on the last couple of years? The Candlelight Group weathered that storm well? Yes, we did. We did. We only took one year off for yes. 2020, yes. Uh, but we are so excited this year. We are the Fairfield County Heritage Association's 43rd Christmas Candlelight Tour 43. this year in cooperation with seven historic downtown churches. And we have it slated for December 10th, as you said, yes. six o'clock. And the theme this year, Santa, is peace, goodwill to all. Santa, just imagine yourself. I can't imagine. On a guided walking tour. Yes. Along candlelit paths, going to each of the seven historic downtown churches to hear their 15 minute music program. It is a special time. And I'll bet Santa you're wondering how all does how all this works together. I can't imagine. Well, it's kind of like your toy shop. I can't either, but we have a little bit of Christmas miracle going on here. The evening begins with fabulous performances that begin simultaneously at First United Methodist and First Presbyterian churches. The audiences do the switcheroo. They switch churches for the second performance. Then we divide the attendees into four different groups and they all rotate among St. Peter's Lutheran Church, St. John's Episcopal Church, First English Church, Emmanuel Lutheran Church, and then we all join together and we come to the beautiful Basilica of St. Mary of the Assumption Church for the most exquisite and most unforgettable perfect grand place to, finale. Perfect place for that. It is perfect. Yes, and uh, at 43rd year on this. Yes, Paul. Uh, and, and again, uh, you know, I guess we'll talk about that. You need to dress accordingly oh, because we, dress. we don't know, because no. we, we assume it'll be perhaps cool. And, and shoes. And shoes. shoes. Yes, yes I'm wear sure. comfortable shoes. Wear good shoes because it's a walking tour. And what do you carry? Uh, candle? Flashlight. 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 I meant to say that. Flashlight. Carry you carry flashlight. a flashlight. And we have great news for those with walking difficulties. Yes. We do. This year, volunteer shuttles will be provided by Lancaster Fairfield Transit Public uh, System. Yeah. And Chaslin Carter and the group down there. Yes, don't you love them? They, they are do. so they are wonderful. wonderful. They are and wonderful. they make the whole evening perfect for yes, us. Yes, that's perfect. That they're, a wonderful? they're a great local group. Uh, uh, they that, are. And I'm sure they're a wonderful partner with you all the, and down they're, here. Well, they're wonderful. Yeah, Thank you, yeah. Santa. Uh, how, how, how can people get tickets to that? Because uh, I know there's a, a limited question. number. Oh, this year. We only have 350 tickets available. Okay. Okay. And so we oh, hurry because they're going fast, aren't they, Carl? They always do. They this always do. Sell show. And so we, the tickets are $10 still only for adults and only $4 for students 5 <coughs> through 18 years of age. And you must go online as quickly as you can to fairfieldheritage.com or call the office at 740-654-9923. And that's how tickets can be gotten. And you ha can you get them that night if they're, oh, I guess only if they're available? Only if they're available. Uh, we didn't have any available last year. No. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do is get them as quickly as possible. So. Carl, I might ask you about the volunteers. How many do you have involved for this? Well, this is a grand production that we do every year, and it takes many different people, many different organizations to make it happen. So we have two drivers and shuttles provided by Lancaster Transit. Yeah. We have the clergy and music directors of each of the churches who work throughout the entire fall season <coughs> to prepare the programs and get the music ready. Also, their 
church ushers will help us get in and out of the churches. Right. You have the tour guides themselves from the association who'll be getting everyone from one location to the other. In addition to that, we also have the volunteers who place the luminaries along the sidewalks. They also illuminate them and then go back after the event and take them all down. Wow. It, it doesn't end just when it ends. Oh, no, not, no. not at all. <laughs> uh, we are also very fortunate that the Lancaster High School provides students to assist us with the crosswalks. And our local police department also provides coverage to help us get through the more high traffic areas sure. of the tour. And, and, and what time does all this kind of start then again? Well, the tours begin at 6 o'clock. Okay. And there are two starting points. Be well points. dark by then. Oh, we yes. know that now. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So there are two starting points, depending on the tickets that are purchased. And those are the First United Methodist Church and the Presbyterian Church. Are you ready for this year again, Elf Lynn? Oh, always ready, dear one. Always ready. Uh, exciting time to be back. And uh, it seemed like another year is upon us. 43rd year, as you 43rd indicated. 43rd year. And... Uh, these choirs at these churches are, uh, they do such a great job. Oh, Paul, you are so right. At uh, First Presbyterian Church, we're delighted by the celebration ringers mm -hmm. who will ring um, a child is born and the holly and the ivy. And then we go to, uh, we have First United Methodist Church and St. John's Episcopal Church choirs who sing gorgeous Christmas music and St. Peter's Lutheran Church. Mm -hmm. The praise team will perform Casting Crown's version of I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And then we have at Emmanuel Lutheran Church, the heavenly sounds of Flutasia. And the other churches, this is just to wet your whistle. Okay. Okay, the okay. other churches you must come to hear the rest of the beautiful music we have to offer. Now, how, I, I don't think I, I forget, how long is the program at St. Mary's to wrap up? Because I think each of the uh, preceding ones are, what, 15 minutes 15 in length? 15 minutes, yes. And, and it's, so is it more of a grand finale up there? The grand finale is 20 minutes, mm -hmm. as well as the beginning mm -hmm. performances are okay. 20 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for asking that, Santa. Well, we, we'd like to know these things. I'm glad you uh, have everything under control here at the North Pole. Well, we do what we can to help, Thank but with you. Elf like you, it's it's much easier. And Carl. And Carl. Elf Carl. Elf Carl. Elf Lynn. Elf Carl. He's the new elf. They, these are the folks that are in charge of the co-chairs of the uh, Lancaster Candlelight Tour, Christmas Tour for 2022, um, 43rd year. Um, any surprises we can look for? Any exciting things different this year? Or you pretty much got it down? Well, just look up to the sky. <laughs> and maybe a few sparkling snowflakes will come snowing down. And it will. we will have it, rain or shine. Yeah. And I've been there on there on uh, some particularly cold evenings. I can remember that. Uh, but it's always such a, a great evening. Uh, I'm sure it's such fun to put this on and kind of put it all together. Oh, it is. Absolutely. It's one of the biggest events of the year that we have. And uh, I've never had a bad time there. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, it's, it's always a great yeah. time. And again, I know you're thankful. You've indicated how many volunteers. It, it does take a village to put this on. Oh, it, it absolutely does. But for having this be around for 43 years, it's become not only a city tradition, but a tradition for so many families and, and people here in Fairfield County oh, yeah. that uh, I can't imagine us not ever having it. Well, it, the downtown will look will look beautiful by then. We'll have the mm -hmm. Christmas tree behind us here all lit up. It'll be uh, just a festive time of the year. So it's Saturday night, December 10th. Uh, probably no tickets at the door. Let's go with that. So tickets, again, should be purchased how? Go online at fairfieldheritage.com or call the office at 740-654-9923. This is a, a pretty big event. It is. And uh, yes. you guys do such a great job putting it on. And again, the churches, and again, I know they practice all year for things like this. To, they all have a little 15-minute program set aside. So it's just something different er everywhere you go. And what would you say, seven and St. Mary's or six and St. Mary's? All together, seven historic. Six, six. And then churches. and then and then the big finish up at uh, St. Mary's yes. of the Assumption Church. Uh, 
congratulations on being back for I know you had to take a year off a couple of years ago but uh, you're back strong this year for your 43 Carl Lynn we're looking forward to it uh, thanks to all your folks at the Heritage Association who put this on it's it's well worth the time and well worth if you haven't been on this to attend it it's, it's just a great event so best of luck on this we hope for good weather we'll do what we can Thank you so much, Santa. Yeah, we do what we and can. And thank you, everybody. Thank Lynn and Carl with us for the Heritage Candlelight Tour on December 10th. We're excited about it. It's going to be a great. Thank you both for being with us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Fairfield Today. Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities.